Especially at the very beginning, deep within your heart to say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you Muslims. And then you say another Alhamdulillah deep from within your heart that Allah Azza wa Jal made you Muslims from Ummatul Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because I tell you something, it is always good to be a Muslim. Whether you existed in the time of Adam alayhi salam or Ibrahim alayhi salam or at the time of Musa or Isa alayhi salam. But the very best time in all of history to be a Muslim is to be a Muslim in Ummat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas. You were the best of nations to ever exist and come out and be produced to mankind. And Ummat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the first people to enter the paradise bi idnillah. So alhamdulillah that we in our time in where it is the best to be a Muslim. My brothers and sisters in Islam, of course, the conference and the event is about the Quran. And I want what I wanted to share with you in a few minutes is how Surah Al-Fatiha, the greatest Surah in the Quran, how can Surah Al-Fatiha cure our anxiety, depression, and distress? Especially in this time where we are witnessing injustice and oppression and with inflation on the rise and with tests and tribulations and calamities, each and every single one of us here has some sort of concern and worry that is bothering him in his life. And did you know that Surah Al-Fatiha offers a cure and a protection from these matters? This is what I want to share with you. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the Quran as a shifa, as a healer and a cure. Allah azza wa jalla he says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ He said, we send down the Quran as a healer and a cure and a mercy for mankind. And more specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ More specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the Qur'an as a cure and a healer for what is in the chest. And that is the heart. And you know, this is where doubts are. This is where desires are. This is where ignorance is. This is where darkness is. This is where arrogance and hypocrisy and jealousy and hatred is. This is where depression is and sadness and anxiety and worry is. And so the Quran is a shifa for what is inside the chest. It is a shifa for what is happening inside of the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to the Quran as a shifa, not dawa. Dawa is medicine. Shifa is a healer and a cure. And the difference is that Medicine sometimes can work, other times it doesn't work. But a shifa is always 100%. It heals and it cures. Al-Quran is not a medicine. Al-Quran is a treatment. It is a shifa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the end of times. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Al-Fatiha is also known as Al-Shafiya, the curer, the healer. And that is because of an incident that happened with a companion by the name of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. He, alongside other companions, they were traveling and they arrived to a town and they requested food from the townspeople. And the townspeople refused to feed them. And at the same time, their master was stung by a scorpion or a snake or a spider, whatever it is. So they tried to cure him, they tried to heal him and offer medicine, nothing was working. So they went to those companions that they refused to feed. And they said to them, please, we've tried everything with our master and nothing has healed him up. Do you have anything? So Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, I have something, but I will not offer it to your master until you pay us a tribute for our work and what we're about to do. So they agreed to give them a flock of sheep. And Abu Sa'id al-Khudri went to this man and he was laying there, venom in his body, about to die. So Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, 
he blew onto this bite, onto the wound, and he began to read Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, until he reached the end of it. The hadith mentions, فَقَامَ كَأَنَّمَا نُشِطَ مِنْ عِقَالِ فَانْطَلَقَ يَمْشِي وَمَا بِهِ وَمَا بِهِ قَلَبَهِ he got up as though nothing has happened to him. He got up with absolutely no pain and injury with him. Allahu Akbar. Al-Quran was a physical cure for this man, for his ailment and illness. And it is also a spiritual cure as well. Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said, I sat in Mecca for a while and I would get sick and I did not find any doctor or any medicine. So I would treat myself with Surah Al-Fatiha and I found an amazing, incredible effect for it. And anyone around me who complained of sickness and illness, I would prescribe for him to read Surah Al-Fatiha and they would also find incredible benefit, amazing for this. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to make a point, but listen to this very carefully. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ma'arish, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا the human being was created anxious. He's always terrified and worried and scared of the future. Whenever he is afflicted with evil, sickness, poverty, loss of wealth and health, loss of a loved one, a parent, a child, no matter what the case is, how does he respond? He is impatient. He becomes scared and he becomes worried and he loses hope of any good happening to him. That's the human being. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا And if he was touched with goodness, then he withholds, he's stingy, he's miserly. That's the human being. Allah Azzawajal said, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Except for those who are committed to their salat, Allah will give them the strength and the ability for them to overcome the calamities and the anxiety and depression and distress in their life. The more salat you have in your life, obligations, voluntary prayers, al-witr, sunan al-rawatib, the more control you will have over your stress and calamity and anxiety. And the less salat you have in your life, then you will be overcome by your distress and anxiety and by your depression. Now, why did I share this with you? Because at the core of a salat, is Surah Al-Fatiha. That's the core of the Salat. Therefore, what gives you control over your calamities and your distress and anxiety and over your depression is Surah Al-Fatiha. And this is why Surah Al-Fatiha itself is called as salat This is a name of it, as salat And this is found in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah said, قَسَمْتُ الصَّلَاةَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي نِصْفَيْنِ That I divided a salat, meaning the fatiha, I divided it between me and my slave in half. So when the slave says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, حَمِدَنِي عَبْدِي Allah says, this is a conversation. There is a dialogue. You need to feel this when you're reading Surah Al-Fatiha in order for it to have an effect on you and treat your stress and your calamities and also your depression and your anxiety. When you say all praise belongs to the Lord of the worlds, Allah would say, Hamidani Abdi, my slave has shown gratitude to me. You know what that means? It means that Allah has acknowledged your gratitude towards him. You know, often, most of the times, we sit down and we say, did Allah hear our praise? Did Allah recognize it? Does Allah hear me? Can Allah hear me? Does he know that I'm praising him and thanking him? Yes. In Surah Al-Fatiha, he says, Hamidani abdi, my slave has been grateful to me. So Allah Azzawajal acknowledges it. Then when the slave says, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Athna alayya abdi, my slave has praised me. Once again, Allah acknowledges your praise of him. You don't worry to say, did Allah hear me? Did he acknowledge? Did he accept from me? 
you just be concerned about reading Al-Fatiha. And the response is there, yes, Allah Azzawajal has acknowledged your praise of him. When the slave says, Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Majjadani Abdi, my slave has glorified me and honored me. And Allah has acknowledged your glorification of him. And when the slave says, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een, you alone we worship and you alone we seek your help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hadihi bayna bayni wa bayna abdi wa li abdi ma sa'al. That's between me and my slave. Look at the conversation now. It's become personal. It's like Allah is saying, this is between you and I. No one's involved in this. This is between you and me. And for you is what you ask. You haven't even asked yet. The asking of guidance is coming next. But because you've shown gratitude to Allah by saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen and you've praised Allah and you've glorified Him by saying Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm deen Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with the servant. He's pleased with the servant to the point where he says and for my servant is whatever he asks for. You're in a position to ask now. So when the slave says, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ Guide us to the straight path. صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the path that you be, of those who you bestowed your favor and your mercy upon. Other than the path of those who earned your anger and your wrath and those who were misguided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هَذِهِ لِعَبْدِي وَلِعَبْدِي مَا سَأَلْ that is for my slave, and surely for him is what he requested. And Allah Azza wa Jal continues to give us guidance. Whether you realize or you don't, that's because you're reading Surah Al Fatiha at least 17 times a day in your salat. And you ask, why am I here tonight? Why have I chosen on a Friday night to come and sit when I could have done a million other things and listen to the word of Allah being recited and being explained? You know why? Because perhaps during this day, Allah Azza wa Jal, He heard that Ihdina Sarat al Mustaqim of yours, and He's guided you. He guided you to this event so you can hear something that will benefit you in your relationship with Allah. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters in Islam, let's take a dive ayah by ayah in Surah Al Fatiha. I'll share as much as I can with you until my time is up. And let's extract how each and every single ayah helps us cure depression, anxiety, and distress. My brothers and sisters in Islam, when you read Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the first ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha, and of course there is a difference of opinion among the ulama, but there is no doubt that Al-Basmalah has a heavy weight in Islam. So now, when you say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, how does that treat? How does it cure? depression and anxiety and distress. Because when you say Bismillah, this ba is ba'ul isti'ana. You're seeking Allah's help. So now, in whatever calamity you're in, whatever is bothering you, you're being forced to seek Allah's help. That's what Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is telling you. It's telling you give up. It's telling you surrender. It is telling you you cannot do this life on your own. If you try to face life on your own, you will be in misery and you will fail miserably. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is telling you, face this life with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. And so there was a companion by the name of Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiallahu anhu. On the day of Uhud, he experienced a calamity. His finger was cut off. Imagine a finger cut off. You know what he did? He said, hiss. Yani he said, like this. That's a normal reaction. Anyone will do this if your body was injured. Imagine a, a finger being cut. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard him. And he said to him, he said to him, Ama law qulta bismillah, la rafa'atka al malaika. He said to him, if you just said bismillah, the angels would have came and they would have raised you. Allahu Akbar. Face your calamity with Bismillah before you utter words of pain in this worldly life. And just like Ibrahim alayhi salam, 
He was thrown, he was launched into a fire. And that fire is a calamity, no doubt. It is supposed to burn a person. He was launched into the fire. He didn't scream up in the air as he's landing. Rather, he said, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. He said, sufficient is for me, my Lord. And he is the best to rely upon. And what happened? Allah Azzawajal's help was with him. Allah Azzawajal made the fire cool and peaceful upon him. And just like Yunus alayhi salam, he ends up in a calamity, in the belly of a whale, in the darkness of the night, in the depth of the ocean. These are three darknesses. If he put his hand in front of him, he couldn't see it. He literally reached a rock bottom. And even then, he did not look for worldly means. And he did not rely upon himself. Imagine you are stuck in a situation like that. The first thing we do is we take the phone and the light and see how can I escape. He didn't resort to worldly means because he knows I cannot face calamities by myself. If I entrust myself, I will fail miserably. So he said, La ilaha illa ant subhanak inni kuntu min al he faced his calamity with Allah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azzawajal would save him at the end. Allah said, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ Had he not been from those who praised Allah and worshipped Allah, he would have remained in the belly of that whale until the day of judgment. He would have remained in his suffering and his calamity. And he would have remained in his depression and anxiety and distress until the day of judgment. But he faced it with Bismillah. He faced it with the name of Allah. And Allah Azzawajal saved him. So when you read Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it is forcing you to surrender and stop and face this worldly life with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah's aid is knee and it is close. And don't give up. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, عَجِبَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ قُنُوتِ عِبَادِهِ وَقُرْبِ غِيَرِهِ Allahu Akbar. Have you ever heard of this hadith? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Your Lord, he is amazed at the hopelessness of the servant. He is amazed when the slave gives up hope. And his change of affairs were very close and very near. But he gave up. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And that's how it cures stress, distress, and depression and anxiety. We move on. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise and thanks belongs to Allah. And how does this ayah cure distress, anxiety, and depression? Because when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, it forces you to think of the blessings and to be grateful to them. You know, when a person is depressed and he's anxious, and he's in distress, what happens? That blocks, that blocks you from seeing and recognizing the blessings in life. Because you're just focused on what is concerning you. And it blocks your vision from the thousands and millions of blessings that are still working good for you in this life. So Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is forcing you to change your attitude of gratitude. It is forcing you to be grateful to whatever is happening that is good in your life. Alhamdulillah, that you're still a Muslim. Alhamdulillah, that you still love Allah. Alhamdulillah, that you still love the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, for the eyes that Allah has given you. Alhamdulillah, for the health. Alhamdulillah, for many, many things that you have. I tell you something. There was a companion, his name is Abu, Abu Al-Ash'af. Him and Shaddad ibn Aus, they both went to visit a man that was sick. They entered upon him and they said to him, Kayfa asbahat? How are you this morning, my brother? He was sick. You know what he responded and he said? He said to them, Asbahtu fi ni'mah. He said, I'm waking up this morning and I am immersed in an abundance of blessings. Allahu Akbar. Wa halil maradu ni'mah? Is sickness a blessing? What is this companion talking about? Of course it's a blessing. Of course sickness is a blessing. 
because it purifies your sins. It elevates your rank with Allah. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, perhaps the servant has a rank and a level in the paradise. He will never ever reach with his salat, with his fasting and with his sadaqah. He will only get there through a calamity Allah inflicts upon him. Allahu Akbar. So this companion is aware of this matter. That is how Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen cures depression, anxiety and distress. It forces you to think of the good. And this is why in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even in bad times, he would say, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal, all praise and thanks belongs to Allah in every situation I'm in. Alhamdulillah is to praise Allah with love. That's what Alhamdulillah is. Because I can praise something without loving it. You know, sometimes you might have an enemy out there. He does something good. So you'll praise him and give him credit for what he did that is good. But you actually don't love him. That can happen. But Alhamd necessitates that you praise Allah with love. So when you are in your depression and anxiety and distress, and you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, internalize the love that you have for Allah Azza wa Jal, no matter what you're going through. There is a lot to be grateful for. There is a lot. And you know, when Allah Azza wa Jal tests a person, He says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ Allah tests you with something. How can you reach that level of being grateful to Allah when you are in the midst of a calamity? Because you know, when a person experiences a calamity, there are four ways to react. You can either be displeased with Allah, you can either be patient, you can either be pleased with Allah, and the highest level in a calamity is to thank Allah for the calamity. You know how you can reach this? Because when Allah tests you, He tests you with something. And He leaves a lot of that thing that He tested you with. The only way you can reach this level is by focusing on what Allah Azza wa Jal left for you. Just like Urwa ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He had a, a disease in his leg, so it had to be amputated. And he also had a few children. He had about four kids. And they were coming to him. And one of them, was thrown off the back of the horse and kicked and he died. So they cut his foot, they amputated his legs, his leg off. And then after uh, he woke up, they gave him the news that your son had died. So you know what he said? He said, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal gave me two hands and two feet. And he gave me four children. Then he said, Alhamdulillah, for what Allah has taken, and that is one limb of the two hands and the two legs, and he has taken one child. He said, Alhamdulillah, for what Allah took, and Alhamdulillah, for what Allah Azza wa Jal has left with me. That's the only way to reach the highest level, which is the level of Hamd during a calamity, by looking at what else is left. When you lose some wealth, Say Alhamdulillah for whatever remains. When you lose some health, say Alhamdulillah for what remains. When you lose a loved one, say Alhamdulillah for whoever remains. And so on. That's the ID. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. When you say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, you are forced to think of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how does this ayah cure depression and anxiety and distress? Because every single calamity you go through, is injected with a lot of Allah's mercy, compassion, and kindness. Whether you realize it or not, Allah says, Allahu latifun bi'ibadihi. Allah is gentle and compassionate with his slaves. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown in the fire, Allah made it cool and peaceful. That's Allah's compassion and mercy to Ibrahim alayhi salam during the calamity. Naam, this is what we're supposed to think of. Ayyub alayhi salam, when he was bedridden for 18 years, couldn't move from his bed due to the sickness that was upon him. Even his, the whole community ran away from him. And he lost his wealth and he lost his children. He was alone. Only his wife was with him. She would carry him to the bathroom and back. And after 18 years, you know what he says? 
He says, Rabbi, Masani Abur. Lord, the pain has touched me. And you're the most merciful. Allahu Akbar. I tell you something. All of us, in times of goodness, it's very easy to say Allah is the most merciful. But try to say it after years of calamity and suffering. Then at that moment, it will be an achievement. So when you're going through anxiety, depression, and distress, and you say, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, you're fighting that evil whispering of a shaitan who wants you to doubt the mercy of Allah. So you realize that Allah is merciful with you. He's always been kind and good to you. You know Yusuf alayhi salam, Mashaykh were talking about Yusuf alayhi salam. I give you an information about him. How many tests did he go through? How many calamities did he go through? He was thrown in a well. He was separated from his father and his mother and his family. He was sold as a slave. He ended up in a fitna close to zina. Then Allah saved him. He ended up in prison. Calamity after calamity after calamity. And at the end of the surah, you know what he says? When he gathers his family, he says to them, وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي My Lord has always been kind to me. My Lord has always been compassionate and merciful to me. That's the attitude he had, even though he went through this entire life of calamity. So when you read Alhamd Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, you're forced to think of the mercy of Allah. وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ The mercy of Allah has encompassed everything. Why do you think it hasn't encompassed you? This is from the shaitan. And this is how this ayah, it cures depression, anxiety and distress.